Um, now, looking at it all, of course, my next question is going to be uh, what you remember learning about Africa. This is for the fact that we are talking about history. Now, there is one trick that a lot of Europeans use, or Westerners, let me put it in general, is that they try to tell the, Af the African Americans that their history started from slavery. <laughs> Anything other than that is, is just black, nothing. And they propose the same thing in Africa, actually, that our history started from colonialism. Anything other than that is really not there. But this is a trick. It's a trick to cut, off, or to cut us off from our root. And when somebody is cut off from his root, you have nothing anymore. You are standing in the air. And if you are standing in the air, even the mere breeze that is not even strong can wave you to any direction. But now, this is a people that have thousands and thousands of years of history. So, if we have to talk about history, are we really talking about just slavery and colonialism? Because I say often here, if we were to take up, take up the history of Africa and also look at colonialism and slavery, these two episodes are going to be like a dot, even too insignificant in the line of things in African history. Because our history has been dated down thousands and thousands of years. So I come back to the question. What do you remember learning about Africa in the United States? Well, I'll say, I'll say this, um, and I referenced my uncle Harold Bennett, who put me on to a lot of uh, reading materials, a lot of literature, and a lot of scholarship. And so one of the books that he put me on to was a book that I have right here. Um, it's called Nile Valley, Contribution to Civilization, and it's by Anthony Browder, who was still living, doing a lot of work in uh, Egypt or uh, years, thousands of years ago is considered uh, Kemet. But what I've learned, you know, I spoke a few moments ago about the victories and how there were so many illustrious accomplishments and achievements that we can look at um, that a lot of times those stories go untold. I remember when I was first, when I was a, a college student, I was given an assignment to look up European and Greek philosophers. I was, you know, Socrates and Plato and Aristotle, um, Schopenhauer, Immanuel Kant, all of these European uh, philosophers. But what I discovered when I did some research and some homework on some of these individuals, I found that many of their philosophies and many of their thoughts and many of the things that they incorporated into the things they were doing were borrowed from Africa. Do you know that telling a story is one of the most powerful ways to connect with your audience? Do you know that the human brain processes story much more easily and quickly than facts and figure. Stories are a great way to engage your audience, get them interested in your products and services, and inspire them to take action. A good story will help you create more compelling content that can be shared on social media or through other channels. And it's not just about telling a compelling story, it's also about knowing how to tell it effectively. Now, do you want to better connect with your audience? Then join us on our online training class, Storytelling for Content Creators and Digital Entrepreneurs. Come to obehim slash storytelling and learn how to leverage your storytelling skill to earn more as a content creator and digital entrepreneur. Storytelling is a powerful way to connect with your audience so let's explore it together. See you in the class. And as I thought about that, as I thought that was so intriguing, so interesting, um, I just thought that I said, wow, I think these guys have a lot of good 
uh, philosophies and ideas, you know, but there were ties taking them to Africa. They had to come to Africa and sit at the feet of those master teachers and those who were there. As you mentioned, we can go to Africa and see that thousands and thousands and thousands of years before Europe even assembled itself, there were, you know, Kush and Nubia and Ethiopia and, and uh, the Nile Valley region, all throughout those things, you see civil, you know, uh, and, and we haven't even talked about Mali, Songhai, and Ghana. You're, you know, we're talking about civilizations that help to bring in agriculture. They help to usher in art, concept of spirituality, healing modalities, mathematics, science, um, the list goes on and on and on. So when we talk about what Africa has given the world, we're talking about the foundation. And so the point of reference, it's healthy to go to Africa to see that Africa was, was the, 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 the beginning. Uh, scholars have referred to it as the cradle of civilization and so many things that the world has been able to utilize has come from Africa, not everything, but many things. And then there's, there's scholars, there's books like How Europe Underdeveloped Africa by Walter Rodney that speaks about how in order to get access to Africa, um, you had to find a way to invade and, and under, underdevelop it. Stolen Legacy, I believe that's George G.M. James that speaks about, once again, the theft and that which was stolen from the current in Africa. Um, we look at uh, the slave trades, you know, the transatlantic and, and the sub-Saharan. So you find that the scramble for Africa, why is everybody trying to go to Africa? So to me, it's kind of hypocritical. If Africa is so jungle-like, if it's so barbaric, if it's so savage-like, why are everybody trying to get over there then? Why is everybody <laughs> trying to get to Africa? To get it's, to a <laughs> <laughs> it's a trick. It's a trick. That is a trick. <laughs> they know exactly what they're doing, like you said. It's not. It's not by happenstance. But <laughs> Africa, even in, even of itself, and I and I hate to say this, but I think this is the reality. <sighs> the ugly monster of racism, whitewashing history, colonialism. Even though there's so much that has happened before the invasions. And that happened before colonizing and, you know, there's pre-colonial civilizations like we just spoke about. You still see in Africa and in other places around the globe, once again, the internalization of this stuff. I believe it might have been Nigeria. Um, I was looking into some things, you know, not too long ago. And, um, you know, I believe uh, skin bleaching is a huge, huge phenomenon there um, um, in Nigeria, trying to lighten the skin color. And so once again, it's a lot of, a lot of healing work to be done, a lot of uh, historical reclaiming and recognition and a lot of reckoning, reconciliation. And so once again, I, I, I love history. I think that history is 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 uh, a very underutilized vehicle um, that uh, really has a huge impact with how we think, our our worldview, our beliefs, our 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 actions, and our behavior. And what I always urge people to do is let's stop and slow down long enough to process this stuff. Let's deal with this stuff. You know, let's let's understand how we got to this point, not just on a collective level, not just on a societal level, but on a personal level. And, our, you know, my life, your life, there's all stuff that we have dealt with and we might be angry. We might be anxious. We might be resentful. We might be bitter. We might be shy. We might be timid. We might be whatever the emotion is. And a lot of times our emotions send us a message from that which we might need to look into 
historically in our own lives and may not have potentially been addressed or dealt with. So our, our bodies, once again, I said this before, I'll say it again. Our bodies are always storing stuff. Our bodies, our muscles, our joints, our ligaments, our, I mean, our, all of our, our organs, it's storing that which happens to us. So that's why I say from a, from a wellness standpoint, meditation is helpful, movement, exercise, uh, uh, journaling, you know, expressive writing, it's cathartic, it's therapeutic, getting therapy, connecting with people, having groups to talk about stuff, uh, being amongst nature, getting sleep, getting rest, reading up on history, not just history that makes you feel good. These are the things that we can do to continue to, you know, uh, establish healthy practices for ourselves, so that we can be able to live in an optimum state of wellness. And so we can not be so re reactionary um, to what happens to us, but so we can live life on our own terms. Powerful. That is powerful. Because we are natural. We are part of nature. Going to nature to regenerate yourself is just doing the right thing. It's a natural thing. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely.